Welcome to Tackle Fanatics TV and in this episode of TFTV, Kevin Nash and Alan Blair give you some top tips on zig rig and floater fishing. Went in the work to this morning, the weather wasn't looking that good. I watch it every day because you know, I've just been waiting for summer to start. I just love hunting and stalking him and surface fishing. That's my thing. We haven't had a summer yet, but I looked out the office midday and it was warmer than they predicted. Wind's a bit light, but a good chance to fish the riser and hunt them, which is what me and Anne love doing best. So. Spoke to him about his workload and my workload and we pulled a stroke. We've nicked three or four hours off to come over this club lake and we're going to work this evening. The plan is simple. We're going to fish as a team. The best way to fish riser pellet is get upwind and keep pulling it in a steady stream down the drift. So that's what I'm doing. But of course the fish are down the bottom of the drift, taking it off the surface. So I'm going to fish from this end with zigs. One say a foot below, I might even bring one up to the surface as well with a riser imitation, but I'll tell you about that in a minute because I want to get the rods out because these carp are beginning to drop. I honestly believe the riser pellet is the most lethal bait in carp fishing. On its day of course, you've got to be a day when the fish will come up in the surface layers or to the top. But it doesn't necessarily have to be on the top and that's the point of using the zig bugs. You know, riser pellet just attracts them up to the top. If there is a cold chill on the surface they may not come up and actually take off the surface but you'll certainly nail them on the zigs underneath. They really begin the show and Adam down the other end I wouldn't be at all surprised if he soon starts picking them up on the control on the surface. You know, a zig doesn't have to necessarily be, be fish mid-water. Um, I put one nine inches below the surface and one actually in the surface film. The zig bug I'm fishing nine inches below the surface, that's a louse. I have to say it's my favourite pattern. I've caught so many carp on it. I'm sure I would have caught them on the other zig bugs, but you, know, you just get confident in something. So you use it a lot, don't you? Now, the one on the surface I think I mentioned is a riser pellet imitation. That is lethal. Um, Alan's been using that a lot with the controllers on the surface, but there's no reason why you can't use it with a, with a zig rig as well. Both are flavoured, beetle juice on the louse and the shrimp juice on the riser pellet one. Um, set up wise, there's an awful amount of blanket weed in here, clogging up the leads and everything. So I want to discharge the lead. I don't want to have a lead stuck nine foot down on the hook link. So I'm using the weed safety bolt beads. That's an example of how effective this method is. That rod's literally been out three, four minutes. But you know what? It could be a reasonable fish. Oh, yeah, he did out. Uh, only cast that it out three, four minutes down. ago. Oh, this is just such an amazing method, isn't it? How are you doing down there? They, There's a they lot of fish about. They're a bit finicky at the moment, but yeah, that drift's working really well, Kev. Uh, what I've noticed is you've got a lot of fish quickly coming up the drift and feeding, you know, closer to you than, than right down on yeah, the bottom. Yeah, that's because I'm trying to keep them away from you. I'm so good at feeding them. <laughs> I watch them. If they start drifting towards you, I just stop feeding. <laughs> Sounds like I'm gonna have to get some floaters out. Bigger <laughs> controller. Cast it up this end. This lake seems slightly familiar. This is the club lake that we showed in the zig feature last year. First time I ever fished it and I had the lake's big common. But this is the first time I've been back since. 
there's also a big mirror in there that's going faulty. <laughs> and wouldn't that be bizarre? He's lucky Nashy got the big mirror. I take Adam fishing with me because he's my pest controller. I let him catch all the little ones and I just catch the big one. I don't mind, eh, mate? You love it, I love bending the rods, like. I once said to him, what would you rather have? A 50 pounder or 10, 10 good 20s? He said 10 good 20s. So we are a great team. So there's a good tip for you, veterans. Find a young lad, you can carry all your tackle for you. You catch your <laughs> and you the little ones off you. I'll tell you what, this thing's fighting. I'm going to shut up now. And I'm beginning to shake and get nervous. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. And that's a wonderful thing in it. I can still, <laughs> after 40 years. Oh. Certainly kicking up plenty of swirls. Still taking, it's crazy. <laughs> Really got them going. Really have I'll got tell them you what, going. I, I, no. This ain't gonna be over for another minute or two. Do us a favour. Get some more riser. Yeah, keep really them feeding. Are coming up. But you know the score. You got to keep them feeding. Proper feeding. Got it. Lost it. That was a good fit. Well, they're still troughing, so hooking that fish didn't spook them. Got the rods back out now. I might look okay, but I can tell you I am absolutely gutted. That was a really good fish. Really good fish. Alan, I'm in again, mate. I can't stress as much how, how lethal this approach is. I've now been fishing half an hour. You see me lose an absolute chunk, and already I'm into another fish. And let's make no mistake, you know, this lake isn't the hardest in the world, but. You're not messing about. <laughs> yeah. Equal. He... It's not the easiest either. The guy left us where he was arriving, he'd done three days and blanked. You know. I'm not trying to say, look at me, the big I am. I'm just trying to put across that this method is so effective. This fish is not as big as that other one. I can tell you that now. Nice one. Is it? Mm. Oh, Adam just told me it's a nice That's one. Pretty, like. Pretty. Oh, it's not in. big. Get get in. In. Does it matter then they're not massive? Well, if they're pretty and massive, then that's perfect. <laughs> Otherwise, I go for pretty. Well, I was happy to get that one in after losing the other one. Thanks, Al. Well done, mate. What a cracking old wire. Not a bad consolation for that chunk I lost before, eh? Pleased with this one. Should we see the other side? Quick photo to the other side and then we'll pull her back. And we go eat another zig buck. Enough, Mr. Cameraman. Touch under 25, I'm being told. I didn't expect it to be that heavy. I must be eating more spinach nowadays.
Well, Kev's had a couple of bites already, but that pellet's drifted down far enough now that it's sort of stopped here. The wind's really died off, and I've just hooked my first fish on a little bolt machine, probably about 40 yards out towards the middle of the lake, 40, 50 yards. You know, as Kev said, he does like catching the big ones. For me, yeah, I can't beat this. You know, drifting a bit of riser and some floaters out over the lake, watching those backs break the surface of the water. You know, and then when it comes up and takes a looking one, it's just, I love it, it's brilliant. Excellent, love it. So first fish of the session for me. Uh, I've taken it on the bolt machine and uh, it's absolutely engulfed a hook bait. Just goes to show that when you do get them feeding confidently, you can get some really good hook holds uh, when surface fishing. You know, this one's nailed. It's taking it right back. Uh, what I'm using here is uh, a little floater bug and this one actually imitates a dog biscuit. So, so in with my bucket of riser pellet, I've mixed in some floating pellets. Um, some dog biscuits and a bit of zig juice just for added oil and flavour and like I said this one's taking it right back just pop that out and there it is there so you've got a lovely colour there to imitate you know a pedigree chum mixer or, or the like uh, and mounted underneath that you've got a size 8 uni hook um, yeah great way of uh, catching a few fish So another one, pretty little ghost mirror. It's now three in an hour. Well, I've managed to sneak another couple out while Wynn and Ollie have been up there filming Kev. The wind's almost stopped now and the rise of pellets ended up in this part of the lake. There's quite a few fish down here. Uh, mopping up the last bit of the drift. I don't think we're going to hang around for much longer. It's been a great afternoon. Kev's had a few bites, I've had a few bites. It's just been good fun. And when you're catching fish as pretty as this, it doesn't get a lot better. Like I said, I got another one in the net. It was a bit hectic. I was just laying both rods on the deck and I looked around and the clutch was going. Yeah, and I lent into the fish. And actually while I was playing this one, the other rod went off and uh, I've managed to, to slip them both in the net. And there's the second part of a, a quick brace. Another absolutely gorgeous carp be such a productive way of sort of float fishing like this you know laying a couple of rods on the deck and and that is the other beauty of the bolt machines it allows you to fish more than one rod certainly keep the feed going in yeah, nice fish I'm gonna get this slip back and uh, then I'm gonna show you these bolt machines what a lovely little carp Just before I get this cast back out, I'll quickly show you the bolt machine and, and the setup I'm using. It's very, very simple. There's three sizes in the range. A uh, real small, cute one for sort of close range work, real intimate fishing. Uh, there's a medium size, and then there's a, the absolute daddy to get you right out to the middle of the lake, to those areas where they've, it's unlikely that it's probably ever been floated fish before. Really, really simple to set up. You can just slide the, the plastic sprue in the body down your main line uh, and tie a swivel on. The swivel then plugs into the, the grommet at the bottom. 
very, very simple. They've been designed in such a way that you can interchange them. It allows me to take the, the body off and put a lighter or a heavier one on, depending on where I want to get to. On top of the, the bolt machine, there's a, there's a foam cylinder. A great little uh, tip here, you can actually soak these uh, in, in your chosen flavour or oil. Um, I've got a number sort of soaked up, ready to go here. It means before I cast out, I can quickly drop another one in, get it out on the spot. It does two things. Firstly, it can put a flat spot on the area, so it allows you to see your, your setup better if you want to actually watch the fish taking the bait. And secondly, it's obviously putting a load more added attraction into the swim. Its other main purpose is it's a sight aid. So if you want to actually watch your float out there, you can put a black one in or an orange one. It, it really depends on the light levels and what's easiest for you to see. Just to finish my rig off, I've got a nice long hook link here. It really depends on how the fish are feeding. Some people like to fish it very, very short. I personally prefer to fish it at least a metre long just to keep that hook bait away from, from the bolt machine. But yeah, some zig flow line here, sits nicely on top of the water. Uh, and finally, I've got a hook bait. Hook bait choice is really up to you. Kev's been drifting the riser pellet down, so on one rod, I've got the, the imitation riser pellet hook bait. This is an imitation dog biscuit, but, but really you can use anything, a pop-up, a marshmallow. You can hair rig a dog biscuit if you like. The, the choices are endless. Anyway, gonna get this back out on the spot and see if we can nick one more fish before we go. And here's the end of uh, our quick afternoon session. Final beautiful little carp. It's been a great afternoon. Get out there, give it a go yourself. Find a mate who's up for it. And get out there with a bucket of riser pellet and get it drifting down across the lake. You've been tuned in to Tackle Fanatics TV. Tackle Fanatics stock a huge range of end tackle for all your zig and floater needs. We're also a full Nash stockist and offer their complete range at the best prices in the UK. To view our selection, log on to www.tacklefanatics.co.uk. Tight lines from everybody at TFTV.